Louise. Hello. There's that blob painting up on my wall in the dog room. Really happy with it. And Izzy's just gone in there. These are my whelping boxes that I had made for my, my puppies. So, you know, Lexi had one baby and Izzy had one baby. And I thought, I don't want them being raised as singletons. Izzy? Hey, baby. Hi. What are you guys doing? <laughs> they're very loud. They're just playing, but they're very loud. <laughs> so there's just two little babies. So instead of Lexi raising one and Izzy raising one, I put them together and the mums, hey, Charlie, settle down. The mums actually take it in turns to come and feed the babies. Izzy's just taking some food and coming in here to eat it. But um, yeah, it's it's quite, quite unusual um, for two mums to sort of co-parent. But Izzy will feed them. And then she'll go out and Lexi will come in and Lexi will feed them and then she'll come out. Sometimes they both lie in there together. Uh, they won't let anybody else in, but yeah, it's, it's, um, it's quite unusual, but it's very nice for the babies to have each other. Otherwise, when there's only one of them and the mum gets up and leaves for an hour or so, then, you know, they're all on their own and they cry and it's much better if they're, they're together and raised together. So there you go. Izzy Pops, say bye to everyone. Bye bye. G'day guys. Welcome back. I've got some leftover paints. Look at these. Now these were from my uh, Cherry Blossom Balloon smash the medallion so they've been sitting in here with a, a big cup upside down for oh, a couple of weeks now um, so the edges are dry it's got kind of lumpy bits around the side my sticks are all dry and icky so like I didn't want to you know scrape that and use that paint but I did want to use the good paint that was inside. So I've poured some of each of those out into fresh cups with fresh sticks so I don't get any goobers in there. And uh, I'm going to use up these leftover paints and I'm going to do a sandwich pour in uh, pinks and apricots just to try and use up some of those paints. Like I just poured some out, you know, I didn't want to, as I said, I didn't want to scrape the side. So got a little bit there. I did add a splash of water. Uh, let me see if I can show you the consistency. Because it's a sandwich pour, I want them a little bit on the thinner side. So it still leaves a, a little mound, but not as thick as I would have for um, a flip cup. So that's it there, a little mound. It's like when you go to the beach and you you do that with the wet sand and it kind of makes a little castle. That's the sort of look. That's the kind of trace it's leaving. So that one might be a little, little bit on the thick side. Just add a tiny splash of water to that one. Uh, yeah, so I've tried to get them all basically the same consistency. I did add a charcoal just for some contrast. Just adding a little splash of water to that one. Still leaves a little mound. I'll show you again. Yep, little mound. That's what we want. Uh, maybe you can see better in this apricot one. Little mound on top of a mound. It's more of a little wriggle, really. It's sort of a, a little wriggle like that on top of itself. Right, let me make sure I'm focused again on something. Oh, there we go. 
So those are the colours. This is a 30 centimetre by 60 centimetre canvas, 12 by 24 inch. So I've got this sort of darker pink and a lighter pink. I've got like a pale apricot and a pale salmony colour. Um, that's called mauve. And then I've got my charcoal. They're all, this is the pink here. They're all the Mott Mart acrylics. I've taken out that student word it said student now they're called acrylic color signature i think they're aiming at more at artists now so they're all that um and yeah some of you know some of the colors i made up myself i've got three big whites now the whites i did 100 grams of white uh, sorry 100 grams of um, pouring medium to 80 grams of white so i've thinned it down these are probably uh, 40 grams of pouring medium to about 35 grams of paint. So I have made them a little bit more on the thinner side because I want to flip my cups over, tilt, cover the whole canvas, then torch, and then tilt a little bit more. So A, um, you're getting really good coverage, and B, you're not... It's going to overstretch your cells too much and well see if there's a C I want that kind of really blended um, pastel -y look with lots of white um, now I've got a couple of dry paintings to show you this was the one with the Helmar silicone oil dried beautifully uh, I think it's very similar to the treadmill silicone that I use I don't really see a lot of difference if I didn't know, I wouldn't know that it was the Helmar. So, yeah, really, really nice, that one. Uh, and this one was the Pure Dimethicone, which is also really nice. Cells grew a little bit bigger. I was able to stretch them out uh, probably a little bit more easily without them overstretching because the Dimethicone is so thick. So that's it there. Dried beautifully too. Not sure about those choice of colours, but... Uh, I did it anyway. Right, let's get to today's pour. Oh, did you guys see my live pour? I hope you all made it to the live. I advertised it the day before, gave you a little bit of notice. I, I couldn't see the point in advertising it like a week before because everyone would have forgotten about it by then. So, so thank you all for those that uh, did join in. It's lovely having you there. Um, and I do apologize for my blurry painting at the end there where I took my camera down off the tripod That is a big no-no if you're doing a live. I found that out the hard way. Do not move your camera once it's Taping yeah, just go it just pixelated didn't it and buffered and just oh it was awful. So learned that the hard way Righto, so I've only got what did I say probably We only got about 60 grams maybe 70, 60 or 70 grams of paint in that. So let's just do two drops in everything. Because I haven't got a lot. Oh, the other thing, with my life, when I did that big sandwich pour, I, I told you a fibby. I said I was using um, three parts white <clears throat> to one part colour, you know, to get a lot of white paint but when I look back on it it was actually four parts white so it was a lot whiter than I had anticipated it's it's actually underneath this table here on a shelf it's drying so I can't show it to you um, but yeah I did have more white than I should have I I think that it should be a three part white to one part color that's what I've got today um, but yeah that one was a four part white to one part color so just a little bit too wishy-washy um i'll see what i think of it when it dries but i may do it again we'll see because i really wanted a little bit more yellow in it but i'll show it to you when it's dry and uh, you can tell me what you think okay it's got a lot more white and it matches my bedding more but the other painting that's on the wall above my bed it's really quite yellow so this is a quite stark difference. Oh, and I want to show you, uh, before I get started, do you remember my Dream Weaver, my big pink and grey and apricot? Very similar to these colours, actually, that I did for my bedroom wall last year. 
I've got her here. I'll show her to you. I'll just get this glove off so that I can actually zoom in again. I'll show her to you. Um, so that was a sandwich pour, but I think it had, oh, from memory, I think it had black in it. Let's just go and have a little look. I'll take you around the corner. Um, there's that other one drying under there. Still, it's very grey, isn't it? Got a little bit of, a little bit of yellow popping through here and there, but it's basically quite grey. Um, okay, so Dreamweaver is there. Do a, a quick little pan down there for you. Um, so I think it had, I can't remember, it must have had black in it. So today's one, very similar colours, but uh, no black. And I'm not going to pour them the same way. See, it's quite quite organic. I'm just going to do flip and drags. Uh, this one, I kind of, I did a one flip that way, and then this one I flipped that way, and that one I flipped that way. So, yeah, it's going to be a little bit... A little bit different today got my light on <laughs> got my little camera my little tripod there on the table above so let me just pop it back up here and uh, we'll get going hey there we go I'll just slot it in I think that's about right I like it to be perfect it's just See if I can focus it again. There we go. Righto. <clears throat> so that that's um, yeah, basically the colour scheme that I'm assuming this one's going to be. So three cups of white. So one and a half. Um, actually, maybe I need to do five. I always do five on this size. Otherwise, I get um, I'll have too much paint in there, and it'll come off, and then I'll still have a third of a cup left in. So let me just grab another cup. If that would be better because if, if you have too much paint in your cup once you drag it through um, yeah you, you've got some left over so right so one and a half cups is going into the bottom of these and I probably won't use all this color look at that oh that's gone already uh, yeah, because I just poured in some of these colours. It's I wouldn't have actually made up so much of the colour. So for this size canvas, I wrote it down. I needed um, 600 grams of white and 200 grams of colour-ish. If you go over a little bit, that's fine. But I've got about... <clears throat> 350 grams of white of, of color here so I don't need all this color so I mean I could use it but um, it's just not going to be as pastely as I was thinking but so I'll just see I'll just do my normal sort of wriggle over the top with the colors and we'll see how much I use now I only want to use half of this cup of white because I need the other half I think that's about half Need the other half of the next layer, so that's there. Right, so that's that done. Now, I'm putting my two dark pinks on the outside because they will be touching the white. And I've got my grey sort of in the middle. So let's do that. Just a little drizzle of pink. See, the paint's still thick enough that the colour's sitting on top. But I just find that if you use too much, uh, if it's too thick, sorry, if, if it's too thick, um, you get this big spread of white over the over everything, and it's really hard for your cells to come up through that white. So it's best just to have your white a little bit on the thinner side. I have found I've done a few sandwich pours now. And that's what I I did find. Whoops, the stick's breaking. Uh, 
mustn't have poured as much of this apricot out as I did the other colours. Right now my grey, it's just a charcoal black with a little bit of white. And I won't go too overboard with it either. Just a little drizzle, like so. Won't use it all. And the pale pink. Yeah, the charcoal I made up separately. That what was a new a new colour because I didn't have any of that in my um, cherry blossom balloon medallion pour. So I just made up some fresh of the um, charcoal. I probably made up a little bit more than I needed. There we go. It's all in there. And then this, it's kind of a salmon-y colour. I have written down oh, somewhere in my in my notebook how I mixed up all these different colours and I put a little blob, a little sample colour next to it so I know what I did. Maybe one day I can make a, a video on how to mix mark colours if anybody's interested. It's a bit of a pain. It's... It takes a long time you know, mixing colours, so it's probably not a video that I'd really want to do because it's yeah, it is um, it is quite a time-consuming thing to do. But we'll see. I may do it for you guys because I love you. All right, now this dark reddish colour. I think it's a burgundy. It's actually called mauve or mauve. It's one of the mock colours but yeah I think it's more of a burgundy to tell you the truth. I don't know who named it. I'll scrape that out because this last cup hasn't got very much of it and then we'll put the, the rest of the white on start doing a few more actual sandwich pours. What do you think? Do you like sandwich pours? I was actually thinking about doing a triple decker sandwich as in putting down because you know how I had the three cups of white so one cup of white first, two of the colours, another cup of white, two or three of the other colours whatever I've got left and then the other cup of white so it would be a triple decker sandwich. So I'm kind of thinking that might be nice just to separate the white a little bit so I'll try that I'm just going to give this a little layering of white and then I can pour the rest of the white over the top but what about if I did a series in sandwich pours like obviously white <clears throat> and then well this is the pinks one and then I'd have to do a blues one wouldn't I and the greens um, maybe reds and oranges, purples, turquoises, but all in um, in a sandwich pour, just so we get that pale kind of a washed look. And it doesn't have to be that pale, really, depending on how much colour you've put in between. I kind of used up all that colour, didn't I? I said I wasn't going to, but I, I did. So this, this one actually might be even closer to um, two parts white, one part paint. But when you're doing a normal pour, a normal flip cup pour, like you might have six colours and only one of those will be white. So you've got one part white and um, five parts colour. So even a two parts white to one part colour, probably what I've got here, is still you know, quite a lot of white, more than you would normally use. And I like the effects that it gives. So we'll see what this one is because I, I think I worked out this one's, you know, almost, yeah, it was about 350 grams of white, but I didn't use all the colours. So it's probably 300 grams of white and then about 600, sorry, I'm getting confused. 300 grams of colour and about 600 grams of white. So we'll see how we go with this one, hey? So everyone can remember this is a, a two to one, a two parts white, one part colour, and we'll see what we think of. Okay all done oh did i tell you what pouring medium i'm using um it's it's the same as i always use it's the um 60 
glue. This is the Elmer's Glue Oil, which I generally use. And 40% uh, water. Uh, I just put it in there. So it's my same one that I always use. All righty, we'll let that sit for just a minute. I didn't oil these cups uh, because the mix is you know, a little bit thinner, so I don't want too, too many cells. Don't they look pretty? I might actually just stop and take a photo of that while we're waiting for them to run down. All done. I can use that little photo as my thumbnail maybe on, on the um, on the video. Alright, so that should be enough time to run down. Righto, let's do this. I'm going to do a, a drag, eh? Alright, so there's our telltale white over the top, which we get with our sandwich pour. Now these little bits that I always get at the bottom there, I'll just tip those off if I can not get them. It's better, but I lost most of it up there. I'll see if I can do it again. Yep, that's better. I don't know what I'm, I think I'm, I don't know, pulling it down. I'll have to watch the video, see what I'm doing, but yeah, I'm not getting all that because that's kind of wasted, isn't it? That's better. Oh, look at that big stripe through the centre of that pink. I'm just going to put some paint on the corners. Um, will I? Will I? Will I? Actually, maybe I won't this time because I always end up getting stripies on the corners and then I have to get rid of them. <laughs> and I go, oh, I don't like the stripies on the corners, but it was me that put them there in the first place. You know? Okay. Oh, I'm not sure about that stripey there, but... Right, let me turn this around because I always like to tilt the area that needs the most coverage first. So there, there are big gaps there. So let's just see if I can... All right, see so I'm losing paint off the side here already. So I'm going to put the corner catcher on because I don't want to lose any more paint off the sides. With this technique, you really need to keep as much paint on the surface as you can for when you're torching. And it doesn't matter about lines not matching up. Just wetting that canvas there with some extra paint. It's going to get tipped off anyway, but it's just to make the canvas wet. I'm not going to take any more off there because I still want to torch so I can tip tip that little bit off there later on. Um, I need to put something on this corner because it's got nothing on it. There's a bit of white. Hopefully I'll tip over that corner anyway. Should do just want to cover it. Uh, that'll do. All right, now turn it around. Still got lots of paint on there. Haven't lost too much, which is great. And now the other way. That side's done. That side's done. You can see the colours underneath, can't you? Underneath that thin white haze. So that's what we're going for. And I'm just working my way down, covering up these, these triangle areas here. Which need paint. And once they're covered, like so, pretty much covered, then I can torch. 
Now, I don't mind that stripey there. It's just that zigzag that bothers me. So, But that'll go off anyway because I'm going to torch now and that'll bring up small cells. And uh, we need them to be bigger, don't we? So we're going to stretch them out by tilting the canvas. So, But that's looking really good at the moment. Really good. I can see those colours underneath there just waiting to pop up and say, Hi, here I am. Right, torch gently, gently. As usual, gently, gently. Because the white's a little bit thinner, it might um, might react a little bit quicker. But the white is an opaque colour, so it does make the other colours really work hard to come up through it. Because it's a thick, heavy, opaque colour. It's got lots of pigment in it. It doesn't want the other colours to come through. You know when you... Um, I'll turn that off for a sec. You know when you... I don't know, you get a piece of paper and draw a line on it and then paint over an opaque colour, you won't see the line. Paint over um, some semi-opaque, you'll still see the, little, the line a little bit and then paint over a transparent colour. You'll be able to see the line underneath it really easily. But this white, this thick white, it just covers everything underneath it so it makes it really hard to see what's underneath. That's an example anyway. Let's get back to torching. So what I'll do is I'll stretch the white out a little bit and then I'll most likely torch again. Once the white's thinned out a little bit, I'll be able to um, get a few more cells popping up. Oh look, I'm getting caterpillars because the white's a bit thick. It's a bit thick. Not as thick as some. Um... <laughs> That's just an Aussie saying. I don't even know where it's from. I think it's a TV commercial or something. All right, um, I'm going to leave that. I'm going to torch, um, or tilt. I want to tilt that off. I want to tilt some more of that white off there because that's really quite thick. I'm not getting anything under that. But seeing the weight of the paint's already down that way, we'll do that side first, hey, because I just did that. So we'll go that side first. Look at that, see the pink ribbon? Look at the cells it's got on that ribbon. None either side, but on the ribbon. <laughs> that's what ribbon pours are all about. I will do a ribbon, ribbon pour, that's something else I'm, I've got on my to-do list for you. I'll go over that corner a little bit. Okay, so that's covered. I actually haven't gone over this corner very well. I struggled with that corner a little bit. I have to find some white paint. Like so. Um, where's a bit more? Try and match the colours. Just needed a white corner there. All right, so you can see how those cells have opened up already. I got rid of some of that white there. So I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to torch again now that I've thinned out some of that white. And then stretch out those cells again. So that's the idea. That's how you get your bigger cells. But you do need to sometimes just thin out that white if you're not getting much through it. Just thin it out a little bit and try again. I've been baking this morning before I came to do this. I made a yummy butter cake and I got two blocks of dark chocolate and I put it in the food processor and like so it's almost like a grated chocolate and I folded it through the batter so it's warming it it's it's warm at the moment it's it's cooling I should say it's cooling so yeah looking forward to having a piece of that later on today hopefully it'll be yummy 
Okay, so there we've got, as you can see, little tiny cells that have popped up through that darker red section there. Mm, where else? We've got some through this white here, little ones. Hopefully they'll grow. Not much through this white section here. It was obviously very thick. Well, not thick in consistency, but um, it's just a lot of white on that side there. The sides I can tip a lot off. The middle you can't really tip a lot off, but it's nice to have the variation of different colours, I think. So now I just need to take the paint all the way down there and get rid of that little ziggy zaggy and try and get my corners. So the weight of the paint's still up the top. So let's walk it down. I don't really want to lose this pretty pink on the side there. So I'll try and get the weight of the paint down that way a little bit more so I can keep that pretty pink. It doesn't want to move just there. Maybe one of my colours was a little bit thicker than the others. See, it's not... Actually, that's probably because my white's thinner than the others, so it's not really moving the best. Oh, my gosh. It's not really doing a very good job of moving. I guess that's the one downside to having your white a little bit thinner than your other colours is it moves faster, especially because there's such a lot of white, like the white moves faster because it's thinner and then the other colours go, wait for me, and they kind of like bunched up a little bit. So I may have to work on that just a touch. It's okay on the sides here, but in the middle where it hasn't been able to like move very much to the sides um, it's got a little bit bunchy there it's not too bad I don't think I can do anything else to it though but I got rid of that ziggy zaggy down the bottom there which is what I wanted to do so there we go what do you think so it's a stripey sandwich Paul it's got its it's got its lines but they're not straight, you know, they're they're a bit curvy. There's a lot of caterpillars in here. They look like um, fossils, like little prehistoric um, sea creatures that have been fossilized. Very strange. Mmm. All right, well, I'll have to work on my mix a little bit more just so that I don't get this bunchy up. Um, yeah, one of my colours must have been a little bit on the thick side and it's just held all the other colours up, I think. Let me just run my little palette knife under there, catch the drips. I think all my corners are done, pretty much. Oh, actually, you're not done. Look at you. You've got a huge area that's not covered. Run down. Now just put the palette knife on its edge like that to catch all the drips underneath. It's pretty. It's very pale and pretty pink. Um, just a touch of grey in there. Hey, I don't know if I'll get any more cells up and I don't know whether it's worth doing because they'll only be teensy wincy. Little cells. Oh, there's a few there that just popped up there. But I don't know whether I'm going to like having little tiny ones, so I'm not going to stretch this again. Just be really careful. Like if you're going to torch again when you've got really, really thin, thin amount of paint on here, just be careful because it burns really quickly, burns really easily. Okay, no, I can't move it anymore. Radio, let me get my gloves off. Oh, I'll just put my fingers in that. Just touch the side there. Um, let me get some pink paint. Um, and it can just run down. I think I need a bit of darker paint too. Oh, there's some grey. I'll take you. There we go. Try and match the side. Got 
always that easy to match. Oh, now I've put a gray into my white. I need some more white. There we go. That'll have to do. All right, now stop fiddling with it, woman. Take my gloves off. Bring it down for a close-up. Overall, I'm really happy with it. It's, it's a tricky one, you know, because you want your white to be thinner. So I just get this thin film of white over the top because if it's too thick, the colours won't come through. But then you can't have your white so much thinner than your other colours that they actually stop like that because the white's heading off so fast and they, they kind of in a traffic jam behind it. Oh, shoe fly. Did you see that? It's always flies in my studio. All right. Lights on. Lights off. Eh, lights off. Lights off for the close-up, I think. All right. Now, this is where that those weird little creatures are. Look at those. They are so weird. They've almost got, I know, one of them looks a bit like a, an appendage. But they've got like a spine. <laughs> oh my God, don't make me laugh. I'll drop my camera. <laughs> All right. They've got like these little spines on them. They're really cute. Some people pick on me when I say I don't like caterpillars. but Those ones aren't too bad actually look like weird little creatures so there's that pink stripe right through the center and it's got the cells inside it all the way down how bizarre is that oh look at you that white's quite thick there as you can see there's not much coming through and what is coming through is just tiny little tiny little cells But uh, we've got some really pretty cells, pretty colours coming through. I like the blended background. It's really nicely pale and muted. But that you do get that white haze over the top because it's a sandwich pour and because, you know, you used so much white. And that's, that's just how it is. Um, I guess if you don't like... Oops, I'm going to stand here. If you don't like that sort of look of that white over the top don't do a sandwich pour because that's what you're going to get and I wouldn't mind doing the, the triple decker sandwich pour where I put white and then a couple of colors and then white and then a couple more colors and then more white we'll have a triple decker sandwich I think that might look nice too that'll just keep the colors away from each other a little bit well, there you go. That was a pretty quick video. I uh, hope you like that. Uh, let me know if you want to see more sandwich pours. Uh, you know, I could do a purple one next. I could do a teal one. I could do a green one. I could do a blue one. Um, maybe we could just do like black and white. Maybe. That'd be pretty boring though, wouldn't it? Just black and white. <laughs> Look like a snowstorm. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, and I'll uh, see you real soon for the next one. Stay safe. Bye for now.